today I'm going to give you five lesser known facts, things about South Africa. Two billion years ago, our Earth was covered in a green algae slime, and it was peaceful. But from the skies came something hurtling towards us at speeds unknown to any living creature. An asteroid, a meteor, was heading towards the Earth, ten kilometers across and going at ten kilometers per second. It smacked into the Free State in South Africa, creating a crater over 300 kilometers across. It is the oldest known impact crater on Earth, and it exists in South Africa, centered around the Fredefort Dome. If this meteor were to impact the Earth today, it would have a devastating impact. It is twice the size of the meteor that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Another interesting thing to note about the impact is because of the long time frame, the actual impact occurred 17 kilometers above the present day impact site around the Fredefort Dome. And that's because over two billion years, there's been a significant amount of erosion as well as a significant amount of continental shift. So it's not necessarily that the impact happened 17 kilometers in the sky, but with the way sedimentary rocks work, sedimentary layers, it would equate to 17 kilometers worth of sedimentary rock that would have overlain the original impact site if it ex still existed as it did two billion years ago. Nobody really remembers coming in second place, except for those who actually come in second place. Now in South Africa, there is the Tukelo River. It is one of the major water systems, and it also is one of the most important water systems within South Africa. It shares a source with two other major water systems, the Vol and the Orange. Angel Falls is considered the highest waterfall in the world at the moment, that is in South America. But the Tukiela Falls is actually the second highest waterfall. The Angel Falls being 979 meters, whereas the Tukiela Falls are only 948 meters. However, the measurements of the Angel Falls has met a bit of controversy because they were done in the 1950s and some of the measurements don't quite uh, correlate, if, if you could say that. The base of the waterfall was considered one of the rivers nearby, but if you look at where that river is compared to the fall, that's two kilometers away. So the techniques or let's say the hmm. well anyway let's just say that for me the Tugela Falls is the highest waterfall in the world until someone measures the Angel Falls properly well generally it's considered that monkey gland source started in the 1950s when the French chefs at the Carlton building, which was the tallest in Johannesburg at the time, were annoyed by the South African customers constantly asking for a sauce on their steaks, a sauce on their hamburger, and the French chefs made monkey gland sauce as an attempt to mock their patrons or their customers. Turns out it was very popular and today it's quite common at most steakhouses, most burger places in South Africa. The bizarre thing that comes in though is the article that I read 
goes a bit further into how it originated. In the 1920s and 30s, there was a French surgeon who was Russian born, who used monkey's testicles and grafted them to the genitals of male humans. And it was regarded as being rejuvenating and therapeutic. And it became very popular to such an extent that it was even mentioned in the books of Sherlock Holmes or in the book Sherlock Holmes. And this scientist who came up with it, Sergei Voronov, he actually dined at a restaurant in London and he did so frequently enough that they eventually named a dish after him and a waiter who worked at that restaurant actually was employed to go to South Africa and work at the Carlton Hotel and when he did so he actually took the dish that was created in London which was called uh, the monkey gland steak I think it might have been and he took that to the Carlton released it there it became a hit and that is the background story behind monkey gland sauce it is in a way based on some surgeon grafting monkey testicles onto human male testicles and it has even a darker side because some people regard Sergei Voronov as being the originator of AIDS for grafting monkey testicles onto human testicles Now the next one I can't really say is super interesting maybe for most of the population but it always caught my imagination. The coelacanth. It's the most endangered order of animals in the world. Now an order of animals is equivalent to uh, the primates let's say. We as humans are part of the primates. There are over 200 species alive today in the primate order. In the order in which the coelacanth lives, uh, it's Latimeria, there are only two species that exist, both being coelacanths, slightly different from each other. Well, they are different species from each other, but they are both coelacanths. And it, it always just fascinated me that it was discovered in South Africa. This particular order of animals was actually thought to have gone extinct about 66 to 100 million years ago and since then no fossils have been found between that time to indicate that they still existed but in 1938 in the Chalumna River which has now got a name that I cannot pronounce a fisherman had brought in his catch in a local museum curator came down to see what he had caught and amongst the fish he saw this strange specimen and he took it out and he sent it to a biologist that he had no that he knew and it turned out it was the coelacanth a creature that had been evolving from 400 million years ago had been lost from the fossil record from 66 million years ago had now resurfaced some differentiation has occurred over those millions of years but it is essentially the same creature and is regarded widely as being a living fossil the fish itself is quite endangered today and i suppose thankfully it is good that it doesn't have any commercial value because it exudes a foul tasting oil into its flesh so it has no commercial use in terms of being edible for livestock or even human consumption. But there is a significant market for collectors and museums because of its living fossil heritage. South Africa in the 1980s was in the possession of six gun type fission weapons basically the type of weapon equivalent to the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima and they voluntarily scrapped this the only nation to ever do so dismantle all their nuclear weapons and sign the non-proliferation treaty 
So in the 1960s, the South Africa had started to develop their nuclear capabilities by trying to develop nuclear reactors, install nuclear reactors. In 1967, the program was stopped. South Africa started to go towards its own development and enrichment of uranium so that it could develop its own nuclear weapons program. In the 1970s, South Africa developed the Peaceful Nuclear Explosions Program, which was meant to benefit the mining industry by using nuclear weapons to either open up more mining areas or to make mining in general cheaper. Just like it was in the US, which had its own program under the same name, it was more a guise to keep development of nuclear weapons going in an age where they weren't necessarily needed. There was something called the Vela incidents or Vela incidents where a US satellite had picked up readings or flashes of a nuclear explosion, but nobody took credit. It was it's still widely regarded as being a South African Israeli test. However, due to the fact that South Africa disclosed all their nuclear involvement when the transition came in 1994 and they dismantled all the bombs that they had as well as the ones they were developing. No information has come to light to actually prove any involvement from any international countries. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, if you want to hear more, it really helps out if you like the video subscribe to the channel, leave a comment.